This skating lesson is brought to you by Audible, where you can listen to audiobooks of your favorite titles, including Alone by Bill Jones, The Triumph and Tragedy of John Curry. Enter the code TSLVisionaries-20 at checkout for a free audiobook for new Audible members. Alone is also the January Book Club selection for the TSL Visionaries Book Club. To join this community, you can subscribe by selecting the Join button on YouTube. The Join button is to the left of where you hit subscribe beneath the YouTube video. If you would prefer to join the community on Facebook, please click the link in the description box below. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to This and That. We are going to be discussing everything going on in the figure skating world this week. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and remember to smash that like button. Jonathan, it's been negative degrees up here in Lake Placid. So I have several uh, things. This is not the most glamorous Airbnb that I've stayed in. And it's um, it's like a basement one below the street. And you, you, you kind of like walk down steps. They call it, you know, steps. Oh. Yeah. I say it's steps to Mirror Lake. I would call it a back alley where, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, at night you hear them yell, you hear people yelling up at the bar and like you're below. It's, it's a little it's strange. You forget like where you well, are. You know and it's mean? a nice tie in for tomorrow as yeah. I've been reading and listening to the John Curry book alone. Mm -hmm. Spent a great deal of time in like Placid. Yes, he did. As I was oh, driving up as I got to that Gus Lucy part, re-listening to it. Uh, yeah. Yes, and and we're um, up here. So tomorrow at seven thirty, we will be uh, discussing John Curry, and we have some bonus content uh, coming up for people in the book club. I'm trying to talk to JoJo at some point, and I'm sure that if I talk to JoJo about John Curry, Lorna will be like, "I want to talk about John Curry." And amazing. Yeah, there's a quite a bit of Lorna in that book, isn't there? Yeah. Funny how her personality like even came across then. Like if you are, right? The, it, the quotes, yeah, yeah. Quotes are good. Like she, listen, I think that she wanted to be in the fawn. I think, Obviously. and yeah. she wanted to be in Tango Tango. Yeah, like she, me too. <laughs> yeah. Those girls were all competing for him, correct? Yeah. They all wanted to be the main ones. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, um, yeah, I don't know. it's a great, it's a great book. And then there are some other things that will be, Doing. So after we do the book club and everybody reads it over the next month, I'm going to be doing like supplemental materials that everybody can be doing. So I didn't want to like spoil the book in advance and it's our first month and we're getting so, so as we, cause our next book is going to be about Nureyev, um, but we'll still be, you know, luxuriating in our new friend, John Curry and putting that so that it's, you know. Well, and what a perfect combo. I mean, to, to hear how obsessed- Maybe it was planned like that, Jonathan. Maybe uh, it was planned. As if, it's as if we knew that, okay. <laughs> I thought, oh, we'll have John Curry doing Afternoon of a Fawn, then we could have Nerea of Dancing, then we could compare, then we can have all of these artsy and elitist conversations. Insert Janet Lynn clip here. Yeah, of that exhibition, okay. <laughs> you, and like we were, re I was rewatching the John Curry documentary on um, the one, uh, Ice King. Yeah. And the, and being able to see some of those clips and all of it. I do think that this guy, this author, um, focused more on his personal life. Agreed. Times. Yes. So, but he covered a lot, but I think he gave us a good like entryway into re-watching his skating and re-watching his performances. Because I actually think the author might have been tough on him like i i felt at times that the author doesn't like him as a person like there's something about him that bothers the author yes yeah that was clear even in the introduction and forward yes yeah. so in not that he's it's it's not that what he's saying i think is factually incorrect it's do you include all of the other things to paint a broader picture yeah I, so, I mean, he did what he did. He said what he said, right? There's that. So I think it's interesting. It's kind of like when Joan Ryan wrote Little Girls in Pretty Boxes. Mm -hmm. Everything in there is factually accurate. But did they include anything positive, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's. Yeah. That was uh, a tough read, that book. Remember that? Yes. So. Yeah, heavy. 
That's okay. I mean, someone from that book reached out in a Paul Wiley video, Karen Grossman, and she skated pairs with Paul in uh, with John Nix. And I was like, oh, that, funny. Okay. That's Karen Grossman. And her photo is in Little Girls in Pretty Boxes. And she was commenting on the video. Yes. So lots happening. But I'm excited for the John Curry book tomorrow, uh, 7 30. And then like rewatching his performances from the 75 Worlds. And yeah. I mean, I'm very curious to break down what you make of him and Tyler Cranston. Who's the bigger diva there? This is really quite a, a fascinating cast of characters. And it, it's interesting, even as they were talking about like what John Curry was seeing competitively and what he was so striving for and believed in, mm -hmm. it's the same conversation we're having in 2024 about current skating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, it is so interesting because the Lithuanian Skating Federation gave an interview to Maya and she, I'm going to record something with her at um, a point to discuss it more in depth because she wrote the article. Uh, but basically, the Europeans were such a resounding success. It made a profit and they filled the arena, but it, they didn't do it. And people didn't come to see Alison Reed. Like that was a nice bonus. Yeah. But they got professional people who knew how to market events together and they basically told the ISU to stay out of the way we know what we're doing and it was a younger day ever best event I have seen in a long time from that standpoint the styling of all the purple incredible the camera work with these like gorgeous close-ups and like blurry moments like yeah. everything about it was just next level and we almost forget what like a crucial part of the, I'm sorry, Dave, can you give me just one second? Someone's at my door. <laughs> so as you were saying about the Lithuanians, you were- <laughs> we'll be glad, I, The viewers will be glad to know that that was not a bathroom break. Yeah. <laughs> that was a delivery at my door. Um, but the, the camera angles, the full audience, you forget because a lot of these programs do build correctly. Mm -hmm. They do have these big swelling moments for the audience to, to go nuts for. And without the full audiences, we've not seen that. So, so many of the programs were coming alive because the audience was so with them. You can't tell me everyone there was super informed about IJS or yeah. knew who the skaters were, but they all got there and they were all enthusiastic spectators. I love, it gave me hope. Well, in North America, there was a competition happening at the same time that did anything but. Yeah, it reminds me of NCAA gymnastics so well is because it the sport was doing well. They build on themselves, right, with momentum. And then they had a bunch of athletes who went there after the Olympics. And because they've changed the rules with NCAA, it's opened the doors that people who are successful in the Olympics can now go on and compete in college and make money and make deals, right? So what it has done is it's almost like pro skating, right? The, the rules mm -hmm. are here. They, they can't be doing aminars every week, but they can compete against each other and be like Christy Yamaguchi doing a full set of triples, maybe not a triple triple, but a full set, right? That they're doing. And then they... And then a lot of them go back because they realize even if I'm not going to make the world team, it's a great opportunity and it's more money for them. And they make more money if they make the national team, right? And they make it very, very profitable. Jason- well, about the fan bases that come out for them because they can still be watching. They weren't ready to not be watching them. Yeah. And they put them all on TV. And guess what? The fans rip off every single broadcast from ESPN. They put it on YouTube and ESPN doesn't care because it builds the audience for the next week because they have right. so many more broadcasts coming, right? So now Ali Raisman is uh, commentating on um, with John Roethlisberger on, on the, because like some of them will be on ESPN, some are streamed, right? They have different networks and things like that, but they do broadcast every meet and they have top level commentators. They're not giving you Weaver and KMT. They're giving you Ali Experts that also study broadcasting and that aren't just infantilizing, right? If right. someone if someone falls on vault, they'll be like, that's a 5-10 deduction. That's going to hurt their score. Whereas at Canadian Nationals, it'd be like, it was a really hard day for them, you know? See a lot of good things. Like, they don't care. In college gymnastics- well, They're not enhancing you with any additional insight inf or information. Well, 
Are you going to be excited to watch a sport where every time someone makes a mistake, you're like, oh my God, skating is so hard. No, right? That's not exciting, right? You know it's hard. Yeah. You know it, right? When you watch it, you want it like one person to go up, then the next one, then the next one. And it's more exciting if they all keep doing well and, and are at a, you know, so you need competition, you need talented athletes, you need them to train and you need them to show up and then you can build something. But when all of those Canadian men perform like they've never done a full long program, that's a problem, right? Yeah. Sunskate Canada, they need to absolutely up their level of, you know, competition. But I mean, look at Jason Brown. Like he makes more money than almost any figure skater right now outside of a select few, you know, outside of like Yuzuru Han, you or skaters in Russia, but he's making a huge income doing all of these shows in Europe, in Japan, doing, I mean, he just had, I was scrolling, I was getting my coffee the other morning and I saw, oh, WADA and was sponsoring a post about what kind of vitamins to take as an athlete that are not going to be contaminated. And I thought like, that's genius, right? right. Like he's the perfect athlete to be out there, to be making money. Meanwhile, Isabel DeVito has the same agent that Alyssa Liu had, that Gracie had, right? And they're not making new deals. No one knows who Isabel is, right? Like, are her representatives doing anything interesting? Like, you need pro non-skating audience, yeah. Hey, these are people that are just like, I'm sorry, Yuki Sugusa, at this point, she's just like, okay, well, we'll get you that ad when it comes in, right? Like, are they really being innovative? Are they really hustling, right? IMG produces that Stars on Ice show that has fewer and fewer people every single year, but they're well, not- They seem to follow an old formula. Yes. And this is when, how old is Yuki? Would you say? Probably, right? Like in that- and Again, I, I mean, no disrespect obviously to older generations, but I think like we need an infusion of new energy, new ideas and new approaches. And what I have found in classical music, for instance, it's the, older regime of operatic managers that stick to the formula. This has worked for years, we're gonna keep doing it, but in an ever-changing world of how all of it is consumed, you need someone with fresh ideas and new energy for it. Not someone who's like, yeah, yeah, let's give her the Colorado potatoes ad or whatever the heck that was. But you know what, I will say, Tara Maudlin got Rachel that ad, right? I don't think that Rachel was marketable out Based on how they presented Rachel, I don't think that she was super marketable. Yeah. It's that star, right? Granted, there were also issues with skating at that time, right? Like, it would have been much easier to sell Mariah than to sell Rachel at that point in time. Okay? So had the rules been such that Mariah won, I think that would have been an easier sell. And this is why they have to make changes to the rules and in how it's judged and so on and so forth. I don't think that... I don't think that Rachel skating was able to develop enough individual personality until she went to college and started choreographing for herself, right? Because she's then her own person. That's when we saw her at nationals and we're like, oh, wow, she has something to say. Yeah. I don't think that that Colorado environment necessarily brings great art. And I think you can see that now. I mean, every Tammy skater looks exactly the same. That's why I, th I would think, where's the autonomy? Like, I don't, and, and just to bring it a little bit back to the John Curry book, he talks about the same. When he was under these, like, oppressive people trying to dictate everything to him, it failed. And when he kind of had to take charge of his own training at some point, it's a totally different experience. Mind yeah, you, he was older also, which makes that easier. Um, but now that it's, like, so young, it's like, when do you start seeing the skater in front of you as a colleague and a collaborator instead of a little kid you're babysitting and telling what to do? Yeah. Like, imagine if the rules were such that Isabeau could do a really unique spin, right, and wouldn't have to change position a million times and could do something like when Caroline Jang did the pearl, right? But... You'd be like, that's going to be her spin that she's judged and can get as many points, right? And that could be a benefit for her. You know, they need to make the rules to encourage individuality. We're seeing 20 girls in a competition do the same spins and do them poorly and not musically. And nobody wants to really watch that in the number show. Nobody wants to do that. Like, mm -hmm. that's what's fascinating is... These rules have been put in place and you talk to the fans and not it is, body. you know, not, the no fan likes it. 
No skater likes it. No coach likes it. So skater likes it for tr- it's good for training for a skater, right? It is a good training tool, but then they're not adjudicated the same way that you would train it, right? So in some respects, the IJS is really great for a skater because you can look at your points and you can motivate it, but then you realize you get to a certain point where you're like, it's all arbitrary and opinion, right? You can try to work on it and work on it and work on it. And I think that there are benefits to that, but I don't know that if they simplified the rules a bit and made quality the effort that it would really be that different for a skater, right? They still- a skating fan that I watch skating with, the first thing they comment on is like, oh, how come all the spins are so slow now? Isn't that bad? It is bad. It's remarkable because actually the things they have to do are so much more complicated. But again, there's no inspiring piece of footwork sequence that whizzes across. There's no spin that blurs and gets the audience off their feet. That's why I liked when Ilya um, was at uh, 2022 Nationals um, and he used to end with the headless scratch spin even though that's not an official thing, he just did it, but it got the audience out of their chairs every time. Yeah. Um, it, it, there's a lot of power in that. They need to bring those elements back and they need to reduce some of the mental stress on the skaters because we'll see bigger performances, which will translate into more transference, more connection, right? Of an audience member watching who will then get on board and then follow. And the rules are set up to almost alienate the skater and the public and the judge. I mean, it's almost by design, except it becomes antiseptic when you're watching. So I think that that- It is, it's so remarkable to me than the skaters now who can emote, Mm -hmm. given how much concentration they need at all times now. There's no liberating feel the air you know, brush across your hair moment because they got to be thinking about this cluster and that thing and this da 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 da, you know. Think about how it opened up ice dance. They have those choreographic elements. Think about the end, you know, some of the moves in Moulin Rouge. Then the next year, Papadakis and Scissor on at 2019 Worlds, you know, using a lot of those choreographic elements really well to build the last minute of that program, right? I mean, Fear and Gibson are basically running a wave on, you know, choreographic elements and really making themselves stand apart. So I think that for these skaters and these disciplines, you really have to look at like what's working in ice dance. Why is ice dance building and other disciplines are falling really short? And it's really important. And uh, I mean, I was talking to someone today about, you know, what would be good for, worlds and and who could win right and i think if you look at it the energy behind luna would that be better for the sport if she won than calry because calry has won the world's multiple multiple times but she's not a star in japan you know japan focused so much about yuzuru hanyu but they didn't build up the other skaters around him right so now he's off doing his show by himself and the Fed relied on him, right, to keep that market afloat. And now the Japan market is like still doing well, but they don't really have that huge star to energize. By uh, having back-to-back world championships and ladies and men's or women's and men's, you know. Neither one has that personality that they're gonna get behind. And it's almost uncomfortable for them. Like, can people really get behind Shoma if Yuzu is still regarded as the king and doing his own show? Like that's how it must be a very strange. They've almost backed themselves into a corner because if Yuzu doesn't want to bless their competition, he doesn't have to, right? And, you know, they all, it's almost like how we give companies like Apple and Facebook and Amazon more and more and more and more power, but they don't really pay taxes, right, in the right. U.S. Well, eventually, if they don't do something for the public good, we're really hurting ourselves in the process. And we just keep letting Amazon move into pharmacy and move into this and and move into that. And you're like, wait a second, like we have these, we're creating these problems. Well, a similar thing happened in skating where you think of, you know, they put so much energy behind Yuzuru Hanyu. I think most rational people knew that he didn't have a prayer at winning the last Olympics. But, and we knew that we could see in the practice sessions, he wasn't rotating that quad axle, but everybody in the sport allowed it to be like, well, he's such a big star. Don't say anything, right? Oh, he's going to land that quad axle. I mean, he basically had an out to lose 
the Olympics. And it was like a publicity stunt. In well, and every non-skating fan was hooked into that story. Mm -hmm. Will will the former Olympic gold medalist, two times over, land this impossible job? That right. became a narrative that, again, the non-skating fan was interested in. Uh, and so back to your point about Luna and Kauri, I'm like, which winner posts the video that then the non-skating fan watches and likes? Mm -hmm. and I, with the material this year, I love Kauri. I think she's great. I think if the average viewer who does not always watch skating just watches her winning program, they might not feel the same as if they watched Luna's. Because last year she was current and relatable, and this year she's boring. Less so, yeah. Yeah. It's it's boring. Same thing, even though you may get some people tuning in for the quad axle and Ilya and all of those sorts of things, if you know NBC starts posting the program, I don't know that the general public is is going to be enamored past that initial event and the excitement around it. I think his short program is good enough to create a moment. I think the Malaganya is a strong choice. I think the costume is good. The short program is, yes, I think. I think, of you know, there there is a problem where you need, listen, you need a, you need the, a star of a coach, right? It's very important that someone like Ilya or someone like Luna has a coach who is a star. And I'm sorry, but how they are perceived will immediately rise subconsciously in almost everyone's minds if Raphael is at the boards instead of his mother who did the Aladdin program or his father, right? That's, that. it just adds prestige, right? It's like being a part of the right package. But now his parents, you know, Audrey Shin is training with them, even though Tammy will have her name on it. She's not in Colorado. You know, she has to stay with Tammy for USFS politics reasons, which is a whole issue in that society. That like, if someone's, if she's training in Virginia, why does Tammy get to get credit? What did Tammy do? What was her skill set? What has Tammy ever done, right? With anyone other than, I don't know, breaking Karen Chen's foot in like 2013. She never improved after that. So what are we still doing? And why is everyone going to Tammy? And she's not getting any results, but we keep sending more kids to her, Justin Dillon? Like, I get that you were her assistant coach and now you're in charge. So she has you by the cojones, but that's not producing any results for you as figure skating. And frankly, it's making you look inept at your job, right? Like why are there so many people that are so talented that are not working with our skaters, right? Well, like, I, I remember an early interview you did on the show with um, Dr. Silby. What's the name of the- Yeah. And she was saying, if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to get the same result. Mm -hmm. And that's what I view. It's like an antiquated system. They decided at some point, this is the place to put everybody. And there, no one's sort of zooming out to be like, is this really what we should still be doing? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. And again, watching your- I, My iron? I'm watching Victor Pfeiffer at these nationals to see how does Beck do versus any of the men who train in Colorado. How yeah. does Erin Glenn do, who trains herself? Again, they allow Tammy to have her name associated, but she's not coaching Amber. Right. Okay, she Amber's not a fan, allegedly, right? So that's not a thing, right? So, but if you put Amber with Raphael, or if you and you put Luna in Raphael, wouldn't you be interested to watch that as a viewer? Gives you permission to to like respect the work that much more in some weird subconscious way. You no, know why? Because you think like, oh, they're with a professional. Yeah. They're not with some village coach that's pretending, right? If Luna went to Raphael, you'd immediately go, oh, she got more serious. Mm. Oh, she's taking her skating seriously. Yeah. Because think about it for Luna. Like, yeah, it's great that you're building up your brother as a coach. But if she didn't like go to Raphael part-time, and let's say she fails at the Olympics, everyone's going to go, oh, well. She had to, you know, it's her brother. And you're like, well, it's actually her career. Like at a certain point, you need to- Take ownership of it also. Take ownership, yeah. Right? And, and I think Raphael is smart. He once said to me, we we're talking about Ashley Wagner and he was like, look, when a skater gets in better condition, they get better technique. You want, and he's not just talking about the actual 
mechanics of the jump. He's talking about what you are physically able to do. And someone like Luna does not have great skating skills. Okay. When the Russians are attacking her, I mean, it's ironic because some of their skaters do not have great skating skills either, but there is something where if she were trained in her Rocky era, she would look 10,000 times better than she looks right now mm. because of the physical shape. And I think with Amber, it would be interesting to see how Raphael could coach her because I think she needs a specific kind of coach to build her up, right? Um, Isn't what comes to mind first when I think of Raphael. Yeah, but I mean, she's right on the cusp. Like she needs to do something, right? I mean, going this week into U.S. Nationals, if Amber doesn't win, are you as a think about if you're a judge or you are just a an just as an analyst, right? Are you done on this train if she does not pull it off at this point? Well, what's interesting is she has always taken us on these journeys. Even no, 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 from- no skater excuse. Black, you're casting her in the opera. If she Lincoln Center, you have a thing in March. It's called the World Championships, right, Jonathan? And you are the casting casting gay it's on you it's on you to decide are you putting amber out or isabel which one are you gonna like you know whisper to the judges about being like that's my girl she has to deliver we need to get a result are you gonna bet on amber or isabel they're both vulnerable right now if isabel had had a a smoother time at the grand prix final isabel gave her teleconference in the car okay (laughs) talking to other people during it because yeah. USFS communications hasn't explained to these kids what, what a mean? press what a press conference means, right? So that's the respect that she then is showing the journalists who do not play in that US figure skating is now like run out of a postage stamp size office with, you know, Mickey Mouse people running communications, right? I mean, look at Skate Canada. I mean, a disaster, right? Like these organizations are on life support. That gives off a much different energy because she is not coached, right? To deliver this. So I'd be very curious to see. I mean, Amber, I think her- A lot of unpredictability there. Yeah. In totally different ways. It's also not like, oh, there's one thing and she just never seems to get it. It's different from competition to competition. Would I send her to Worlds? A hundred percent. If it sort of like could go either way for the championship, I'm guessing they're going Isabel. And I think, I think if it goes Isabel, it's fine, right? It's not a disaster yet, right? But I, I, I think with Isabeau, you have to look at what is the upside potential. Is she going to pull off a medal at Worlds, right? And it's interesting that Amber is coming up so quickly in US figure skating because you have to wonder, are some of the powers that be ready to move on? Mm. She does just enough that you can't deny her. Correct. This is for sure her her most potential win at nationals ever coming up, I think. Um, and in that way, and she showed these moments, the fact that she hit the triple axel in Skate America, but then the rest of the program faltered. And then at the next Grand Prix, that faltered, but the rest, she shows you all the elements are in place. They're just not all lining up at the moment. Mm-hmm. Also interesting is enough time has passed since then that I do feel it's a bit of a clean slate, definitely for Amber coming in. I I think I was more confused by what might happen right after those events. But I think almost enough time is simmered that if she delivers, I think they can't deny it. It's incredible, based on the season Amber had last year, how much US figure skating got behind her during the off season. 
But some of that has to do with what happened at Four Continents with Isabeau and the fact that she didn't meddle at Worlds and they moved on to the next person, right? And that's that's why there's so much oxygen behind Amber right now. Well, something interesting you were also talking about with Megan and Skate Canada, and you were just mentioning it with the Japanese Federation also, it's the idea that everyone's behind a person is literally putting all your eggs in one basket. Like, I don't understand why it's not a collective, like, like crew of people you're, you're promoting and really pushing. Yeah, it. but in the US, you have to go with who has the power. You know, that dinner, that, that, that judging dinner that you said, okay, it's at Tammy's house after the Colorado championships, Justin Dillon is there. And then a lot, a bunch of high ranking judges, Olympic judges were there, right? So you have basically the top coach of single skating in US figure skating. You've got Justin who's picking the assignments and you've got the judges who are going to judge nationals. So if you think about how groupthink happens, right? Think about that conversation over wine. If one person goes, well, that skater is really a mess, but I like that person. Yeah. You well, can... even in the John Curry book, they were talking about, it's not like Carlo Fossi was in back rooms handing envelopes of cash in exchange for blackmail, you know, like all this sort that of stuff. That only happens a nice dance. So yeah, don't be silly. This is singles we're talking about. So, but the idea that it's like, what are you guys looking for? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you want. And then I'm going to tell you why my skater has it or Tamara in whatever her rooms were, although she's not very political, according to your interview. Um, it was political, this... please. Remember in, that, in the, the second mark, they talk about her hosting parties at her house and then like being like, okay, you have to go. The next group of people is coming in. Yes, which is why we love her, but also this and idea. she could sell that to you. She'd be like, no, I just wanted to have people to share ideas from about- From all countries. <laughs> from all countries, yes. Yeah, yeah, very funny. But again, I think, I think that's how they do it, is they're like, look, what you're looking for is actually really exhibited in this skater. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I would imagine there has to be a little bit of it. If Amber were consistent, she'd be so easy to sell. Easy. Look at the height of the jump. This is real jump, right? Like you could just sell it so yeah. easily. But she has to let uh, she has to let those groups sell it by by delivering more consistently. I mean, that sounds like such a generic comment. Um, like when commentators I are like- I were the USOC, I would be like, are we doing neurofeedback? Are we doing EMDR? Let's what do, do you mean? How can we help? Yeah. Let's do everything to make this skater as mentally strong as possible and give them the support. Because guess what? Almost every athlete at this level has so much pressure because in the US, in Canada, the skater has to fund themselves until they get, the, you know, once you get to the top, then the sponsors want to come behind you, right? But while you're getting to the top, it's much more stressful to be able to put it all together, right? And I was talking to someone that said, there are at least 25 skaters in Russia who are millionaires right now. N sorry, making a million dollars a year, mm. okay? at least 25, and then they keep in that ecosystem, right? But you think about it, but of course they have 25 people because the government funds their entire training. So if you- No money, they have spent no money on that sport. Like, right. like they, the they don't have to worry about quitting, right? They don't have to worry about selling their dresses on Etsy or whatever these skaters have to do at certain points to make things go. So they have a major advantage, right? In terms of that. So they have to make it more affordable for these athletes um but that also doesn't mean that everybody just lives at the usoc and then takes from tammy who's giving everyone marginal attention right like you have to have you know they have the west coast why is renee roca not leading an edge class for the entire national team who's at the great park ice arena even watching your paul wiley clips i'm like where the hell's paul's high level athlete do you know what i mean like well there's a real him. problem in this country when paul wiley is teaching me right but the high level people are with Tammy. Okay, like that's a problem, okay? Do you understand that? Like what Karen has fixed in my alignment and like even like we're doing stuff for my knee and my knee is lengthening out, right? And you think about like Lila Fear and that knobby knee and you're like, wow, if she just went to like the right person, they could fix the entire leg or entire aesthetic, get on a deeper edge, get the better skating skills, right? And- Do you find in like a, a sort of a state sponsored program like Russia, 
-hmm. it's easier for them to share responsibilities and send people to other people. Yeah. Like what I'm wondering is, is everyone so protective here because they're protective of those funds that that skater exclusively is giving them? And it's yeah. a fear if you go work with someone else, you want to go work with them more and now it's less money for me. Like, does it unfortunately come down to logistics of numbers? Yeah. That oh yeah. yeah. Like there's the a- New York, Wait, hold on. The New York um, Conservatory System for Music no, no private teacher is full time. Mm -hmm. Everyone is contracted per student per hour. Oh, please. When Hackensack happened, okay, there was a there was a disagreements going on all about COVID, lots of different things, right? But at one point, they had suspended a coach for like minor rule infractions, right? Well, that coach was like, fine, I'm gonna go up and go to Montclair. And then when that happened, other coaches followed. So then Hackensack develops this contract system to basically keep those coaches in the rink. The rinks are competing with each other. They don't want you to work at both places, right? They want you to work one or the other, right? And that's not always the most feasible, but they use like a stranglehold. Like, well, we've got the skaters. We've got the learn to skate. We're the biggest one. You know, you got to come play ball with us. So they do it. Like, and, and basically every rink nowadays tries to keep the top talent exclusively in their rink. So you get into those situations where you're signing these contracts. Same thing, you know, there are things in Boston where why is Mariah not a scob full time? Or why isn't this person? You know, there are different rules around this because you think, why are Ashley and Mariah like not full time on staff at scob? Yet some of the other people who are on staff at scob and you're like, there's a problem. Like, why is that happening? Right? So Yes. The answer is yes. There's scarcity and it's making it more toxic, right? Because there's now the lack of skaters. People are even more controlling. Before it was competitive, but everybody had enough talent to go around that people were making money, right? There's also the fear of not making money. So there's that is not helping either, right? So it's because unfortunately the skater loses as a result. Right. And skating yeah. loses because again, it's about everything but the craft. Yes. And you no one trusts you as no one trusts you as figure skating because any coach that is developing a talent outside of Colorado fears that they're gonna get a call for them to move to Colorado. So their work feels unappreciated, right? And then you start to see people that were coaches move into real estate or so on and so forth, right? So then that's another talented coach that has left the sport disenfranchised. So it's a whole problem about yeah. what's going on. But I thought the Lithuanians were interesting where they said you have to make nationals interesting for them and you have to really pay attention to what is happening during the arena when they're on like a 20 minute Zamboni break or what's happening because you know, they, they have rusty at U.S. Nationals or different things, but the vibe of U.S. Nationals. Wait, you had that bubble with the thumbs up. Can I get a bubble with a thumbs down for the mention? Well, automatically. By the way, I didn't hit the thumbs up before. It just like did it. So okay. I don't know if it's AI listening to us, but. <laughs> how many times have you sat at a skating event? You're sitting there. You're liking the majority of what you're seeing. And then the Zamboni break goes on or they interview someone and it's super awkward. And I don't you, know why they feel the need to fill it. I and think if they had normal filling from outside of skating, it would be better, right? Because I find the actual in arena entertainment to be a cringe, right? Like you actually- so It's almost like children's theater or something like that. I don't know who it's catered to. It was, and the, oh my gosh, the one in um, San Jose, that was 2018. There, there was no rest for your senses. This is what I love about watching Japanese events in Japan. They're not assaulting your senses at every second of that event. It's okay for it to be quiet for a second. And then when the music comes back on for the skater, we are now with it. Like the minute some classical music program ends and they're bowing and now they're pumping club music at like astronomically loud levels where they're reading scores and now the next person starts their sensitive piece. 
there's no sort of reverence for the actual programs because it's just sensory overload everywhere. Do you remember one year at Nationals, Gracie and Carly were making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on the Jumbotron? I think it was like a Smucker's uh, promotion, but that's kind of a thing. Look, they seemed awkward doing it. They're obviously yeah. doing it for the check, right? But it it's cringy to watch. And you're like, who tested this? Who thought this is a good idea? And, and again, funny. it's like, it's dominating the experience. I don't need to be watching something during an event the entire time. Or how about when they interview an old skater, but they have nothing to say, Correct. right? We all love to see Meryl Davis on camera. But has she ever even given you an opinion other than being like, oh my God, everybody is great here. Everybody is amazing. Yeah, they should give a soundbite where they're like, good luck, everybody. But even those montage videos and stuff, the whole thing, it reminds me of like a high school sports banquet at the end of the year. And I was like, "This, sh I'm, I long for those Landover days. Mm -hmm. She, there was a, like a feeling of like, we are now about to watch the show and the show is the program. Here it's like, oh, here's another skater. It's just as background noise as everything else that's happening. Okay, what was your thought process? Nationals in Ohio. Talk me through what you thought about if you debated whether or not to go. Did it, does anyone, do you get texts from people asking if you're going to events a lot? I always do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I am going to Worlds, which we can talk about how Ticketmaster annoyed the hell out of me because I can only go for three of the four days. I had to buy each day individually and pay like an $80 surcharge for like Ticketmaster each freaking day. And I was like, nightmare. And the tickets were expensive. They were yeah, expensive. I haven't decided if I'm going yet because I have other things going on and other goals and stresses and things like that. And I'm like, I don't know if that makes sense. January's a tough time. I was actually just singing in Columbus in December. <laughs> I, love that. So I feel like I've done my Columbus time. Um, but I have to be honest, the it's a chunk off of work. Mm -hmm. It's the hotel, it's the tickets, it's the flights, it's all that stuff. It's always fun to see like fellow friends and fans and all that sort of stuff. I have to say there weren't enough names on that list to inspire me to go. Mm -hmm. In the same way there was one year I did not go to Skate America, but I went to Vancouver to go to Skate Canada because that had more of the people I wanted to see live in it. And quite frankly, outside of an Amber and an Isabeau, outside of an Elia and a Jason, Chalk and Bates, I, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna devote that whole week to seeing like five people I, I'm curious about, you know? I'm not doing that, yeah. Uh, I it's just- lost her. For you, it has to be good enough, right? And it, it's for me, I'm excited to watch it. Like, we're going to do live shows every night during this week, and I'm really excited to watch it. But to go with that level of expense, they need to make it more affordable for people. And then they need to find ways to engage skaters to keep them training hard and performing. And I think one of the interesting things is like, okay. Papadakis and Cicerone were invited to perform at Europeans by those announcers who oh, wound wow. up, yeah. they wound up making money on the event once they had enough people there, right? But say US figure scene, they don't even think that way. But I would look at like, oh my God, Debbie Thomas, look at the views that her performance and fancy skating got. I would invite her to perform at nationals, beginning of exhibition, beginning of junior ladies, whatnot. Like start making it so that your former champions who are still engaged feel appreciated by the Federation and you give the audience members something to watch, right? Frankly, I'd want to see, like, think about it. Elijah Balde wasn't invited to Canadian Nationals. It was in Vancouver. I mean, oh, sorry, it was not in Vancouver. No. It's in Calgary, right? And he could have gone. You could have Carp Browning there, right? Brian Boitano is at U.S. Nationals every year. This year you can like pay. It seems like you could pay to go have an open bar with him and other. Yeah, I remember that. It was like a cocktail party that you could buy your way into or something. Which, okay. I mean, at least someone's. Fine. Yeah. Right? At least, but you know, that hinges on enough people going to Nationals to do that, to make that successful. Yeah. I don't know. And I don't know that I feel great about nationals 
when at the end, I, I just got an email from US Figure Skating this week about like $100 or, you know, some discount on tickets. And you thought, where was that discount before when people were trying to buy their way in, right? When there was enough time for people to actually coordinate that trip, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they need to make it like a destination. Like nationals should be a reunion, a skating con, and a competition. Celebration of that of sport yeah. in that country. Yeah. And I and will say, you know, those Russia One Cup things, they really do make it like a family reunion of their skaters. Think about how many people do you think would pay five dollars? to go watch Brian Boitano talk about training and skating and his life, right? And you, or 10 bucks, you know, 20 bucks, you know, you go, you fill a whole, you know, arena or a conference center, and then they could make money off of that and, and make money for him, right? Like there are different things that they could be doing to generate interest and excitement in the sport and they're not doing it we just seem to dig in their heels it's just like another like archaic titanic sort of situation that they just won't budge mm -hmm. it's what it is it's the way it is it's what we're doing and i was like but you're following a formula that doesn't work yeah so yeah it's tricky it's tricky but if you told me oh if you go night one debbie's doing an exhibition sasha's doing a little something yeah. You know, um, Renee Roca is going to do that. Like, I would totally be going. Jill Trenery is going to blah, 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 blah. I'm there. Yeah. But they don't do it. Like, are they going to have Gracie talk about her book? That Sure, no. I'm sure not. I don't know. She's at the Brian Boitano, like, open bar event. No. So... Yeah, I mean, ideally, she would have the book and she'd be like signing it in the hallways. What is yours? Figure skating? I mean, what's I think they would hate that? Yeah, well, they, they have no choice, they're they've fallen low enough that they have to. Yeah, what? Um, did you see that Terry is hosting a weight loss show? She's trying to work on her image too, and you're like, that's sort of the work. With all those interviews that have come out, I think this is the literal last thing you should be doing if you cared about it. Like, I, it just blows my mind that a show like that exists anywhere in 2024. Um, but I don't speak Russian, spoiler alert. Um, but even watching the the trailer for it, it was just over the top. I I just couldn't. Apparently she's really nice to the contestants, which is such a joke because it gives everyone else an opportunity to be like, well, that's not how she was with me. Right. Uh, Especially about that subject matter. Yeah. And then meanwhile, the Russians want to get back into international sports. They have the Valieva doping case verdict. Finally get to come out. And how old is that prepubescent girl who just did a quad sow, Euler quad sow? And here's the thing. I'm watching a clip of that at the jumping competition. And w one would think you would be excited by seeing it. And I just wasn't. I thought it was gross. There was there was something disturbing about it, not impressive about it. I saw an athlete. You're like, is that athlete? Are their bones even going to be able to function? And and someone inevitably will be like, well, if so and so from the United States did it, you'd love it. No, I disagree. I would find it equally as troubling. Have you ever seen like when Medvedeva tries to skate, right, and her back is just not functional? Well, right? I remember that being one of the her major observations when she first went to Toronto. She was like, I have never seen so many skaters just take one push of a glide and get so much power and speed and distance. Mm -hmm. Because it, again, it's just clearly not the focus of whatever that camp was. And I would think that's sort of the fundamental foundation of how to do it healthily. And then you have Tarasova who's on TV being like, we're so much better than the rest of the world. And at this point, things are getting worse in Russia. And it's so interesting to me that it's it's the 40th anniversary of when Mary Lou Retton won gold, right? But she won that gold because the Russians had boycotted those. Isn't that funny? Like, I have to say, you were the person that first made me realize that. Like, the way her narrative went never was she won a gold against a weakened field because her major competitors were not there. And that, they still were making deals at those Olympics, okay? If you talk to people there. 
People still debate if she deserved to beat Ekaterina Zabo there, right? But it didn't matter. It was perfect for TV. It happened. It made her a star. It made gymnastics happen in the US. Like it was a whole theatrical event, right? Made possible by that boycott. One, there are not skaters that are really rising to the occasion in that boycott, which is an issue, right? But they're going to have their own alternative Olympics this summer. Friendship games. Great time. I mean, that's what they called it, you know, 40 years ago. And it's going to happen. And the divide could be becoming stronger. I mean, there are rules coming through in the Duma about seizing of assets. They can't speak about things as freely. I mean, Russia is becoming more closed as they also want to be allowed into competition. Well, and again, I mean, I know you were sort of talking about this with um, Christine and Phil and Maya, but what athlete state sponsored is go are they going to let them compete fig said no they the fig is not allowing any of the russian gymnasts to okay. which when i read that i thought that's bad for skating mm. uh, but i also had the other thought of like it would be good for skating for the star power if they come back but in terms of making substantive changes to improve the sport long term at the jump event and seeing how ghastly a lot of that looked, are they going to come back and like people with no skating skills are going to get the top marks again because they can jump? And then like, I don't, I don't think that's beneficial for skating. Yeah. Right? I don't think that's the answer. Right. I want to watch a junior grand prix and see that quad Euler quad combo no. combination. That was upsetting. I don't think that that's going to be the answer. You want to see more of the mouse Shimadas skating well, who can jump as well, right? And, and her figuring those jumps out, I think would be better for skating, but they have to figure out how to market her and spend time and cultivate her as a star and same thing with Gia Shin. And yeah, it, it, it's just a problem. But in, even in Russia, think about it. Like Sofia Moraviova, like she's not a telegenic star, right? She's not... Kostrnaya. She's not Sherbakova. Look how good, how good was my daughter Anna Sherbakova on TV? She was incredible. She looked great. Did she you know she did exactly what she was told? She was smart enough that she didn't probably even need instructions. She just right. best girl. Okay. Best. <laughs> right? She's a winner. Yeah. Okay. She looked like a million dollars. She was cheering with the athletes. She sounded coherent. Like that's the level of broadcaster you need. Right. Not what they had at Canadian Nationals. That was it. And you think about it because there are some good things. Like they know how to produce an event. They at least know how to make it more interesting to the public. But you have to cultivate the personalities that you have. And if Raphael is not going to be at the boards of Ilya Malinin, they should have him on NBC talking about what he sees at the event to at least make it seem more prestigious. Yeah. If Raphael talked to Johnny and Tara at the beginning of the broadcast, I would be more interested to see what he has to say. Yeah. But again, we're all just supposed to tune in and laugh at Johnny's hat, you know, or Johnny's blouse or that's, something. But that's NBC making that decision. Right. They could bring Raphael there. They would bring Bella Caroli there when Marta was on screen. So you have to build up these personalities. You have to build up Raphael so that if he is at the Olympics with Ilya, that's someone that you've seen before. Well, and we've gotten this question a, a bit about the timing of nationals into four continents, which is <clears throat> not it's an ideal turnaround. And everyone's like, what are they thinking? Da, 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 da. Don't we assume it was actually NBC? Don't it, we assume this is a broadcasting limitation? It, it's a broadcasting limitation. They're making that decision. And are they doing it around football to squeeze it in? I think I think we know the answer. Right. But that's why it is the week that it is, typically, and not really for the benefit of the skaters. And by the way, they picked the Four Continents team way over a month ago. Yeah. They had to do the visas to China. Well, it's just like being more transparent that that if you realize that they know who they want to send to four continents, that means that they also know who they want to send to worlds. 
Okay. Yeah. When they're making those decisions, right? But certain athletes decided not to go to Four Continents because they're doing art on ice and they're going to make more money doing it, which is not great for Four Continents because the ISU needs that to be successful. I know for all of the success that Europeans just had, obviously I don't anticipate the same excitement around Four Continents. Yes. Somehow, no matter who has been skating, even when they've had some big names there, it has just never risen to the, the true equal of Europeans to yeah. me for some reason. Some years were good, but, you know, they don't maintain that. And yeah, it's just messy. I, I literally think it's the scheduling. Mm -hmm. I think because if you're talking like Canada and U.S., it is never well-timed. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are two of the four major, five major players in it, you know. Right. And Asia wants to host the event. None of the North American skaters want to go because of the time change and because they're not given enough time to acclimate while they're there, they've got a really great chance to compete the week after US nationals when you're in such an emotional high. Now you're on an emotional low. Then you were just on an airplane. Who knows if you're gonna get sick. You are gonna be jet lagged and exhausted and under pressure again. There's a great chance that any benefit you just got from winning nationals. You could erase immediately. Yeah. And you do manage to summon your energy together that you just did nationals and four continents back to back, are you then so exhausted that you're a mess at worlds? Yeah. It's what it just doesn't work. Right. And the event is so who, who declined it? Do we know? Isabel declined it. Okay. Il Maladin declined it. Jason declined it. So you know, those are not three pretty big names. Yeah. So, and, and isn't the point of Four Continents that we wanted to see like a Shoma, Yuma, Ilya competition? Right. That's the point of the event, but they're not going to do that. So they have to look at that. The ISU has to look at how do we make this event better, right? Right now they're thinking, well, Asia wants to host it. It's affordable, you know, for the ISU. But if you don't have the skaters there, is it going to build the sport? Yeah. Yeah. Can you make it? So that skaters will want to go to Four Continents. If it's always going to be the same as Art on Ice and they don't have the pressure of ru like ruining their reputation and they can make easier money, you're going to... Best after Nationals in a way, then of course you would want to do that, I would think. Yeah, maybe you could do your short program every night or something like that, right? Like there's just different opportunities to do it and they have to change. A, a lot of people are very disappointed that Ava Ziegler has had, she's had a, like a recurring hip issue for a long time. You know, I used to skate with her like on a session, which again shows how skating is weird. It's like me, Kirk, her, another like juvenile lady, like on a session together during my lunch break when I used to skate in Hackensack, right? And like Galena used to like point out her landing position and be like, she's going to have a hip injury. Mm. And all, or pull her from her coach and say some, just how she rolls, right? But now she's not competing at U.S. Nationals, but she is going to Four Continents. Mm -hmm. And you know, she's allowed to do it because people don't want to go to Nationals. They want to go to Four Continents directly, right? Maybe they don't want to go to Nationals. But you have to wonder, what does that mean for her chances of Worlds? What does that mean for her chances next season? How is she... What envelope is yeah, she... Yeah, I mean, if one assume you cannot name the World Team until post Four Continents, then I guess... They can do whatever they want. If they want to send Ava Ziegler to Worlds, they'll just delay the announcement, right? But I I wonder, how do you name a world team? If But maybe Ava's coaches are saying, Worlds, we're not going to happen this year. Let's nail four continents with this yeah. injury that we build for next year, which could be smart coaching, right? But I mean, if I were the USFS, I would want to wait to see how Ava did at four continents, depending how these ladies do at nationals. I mean, wouldn't you? Without uh, Ava, right? I always want to say Ava. Without Ava, we've got Amber, Isabeau, kind of Lindsay in the mix for those top three. And they're putting Lindsay and Ava on the Today Show tomorrow. Now, Ava has the personality where I think she can give a great interview. Lindsay, it will be interesting. She was good on Paulina's podcast once, but she's a shy personality, right? Not used to public speaking as much. But Lindsay's someone, listen, if Amber is going to blow the second half of her free skate, Lindsay's going to come in and 
deliver. What, what that short program I love so much. Yeah. Oh, I would want more information based on Amber, Isabeau, and Lindsay. I would not want to name the world team right after nationals. I would feel like it's, it's like making admissions to Harvard and not having everyone's interviews in and not having everyone's essays. You're like, well, I'm, yeah. I'm partial information here, right? I mean, I unfortunately, because when, what happens is, is that when you go from three spots to two spots, you need the skaters, one, to be at a high level and you need them to be consistent and reliable. Oh, are we two spots? Yes. Oh, then in my opinion, this is a no brainer. I mean, unless something really strange happens at nationals, I just assume it's Amber and Isabel. You would think so. Yeah. But like, imagine Amber and Isabel, like what could go wrong? What if you went Isabel and Lindsay? Would you at least feel like, oh, at least that's reliable. Although even with Amber's issues, she still was finishing higher and scoring higher than than Lindsay, because I thought actually several times on the Grand Prix, Lindsay was being underscored. Right. Um, but I mean, the scores tell you who to send. Right. But I would look at, well, in national scorings. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it'll be really fascinating. And again, same same situation in the men. Okay, we've got Elia, we've got Jason. Are we three spots for the men or two? Three. three. Anything could happen for that third spot, in my opinion, based on everyone's volume. I, I would look at Torgashev, Camden, but the I mean, same usual suspects. Torgashev, like he, I love the material, especially in the step sequence in the short program this year. But again, it's been this nonstop, just like all of them. I think it could go to anybody. Yeah. Naumov, he's been forgotten, right? Uh, Luke Brassard, kind of been forgotten since the beginning of the season. I would look at all of that and yeah. think it's just a very strange situation. Pairs, hello, throw doubles, lack of citizenship for different teams and that could be a disastrous mess they don't spencer and emily have been like basically calling olga every couple of weeks to be like how's your skater doing you know he just started doing lifts a couple of weeks ago because he's had you know a frozen shoulder and bad shoulder injury they're the best i mean emily has landed her jumps she says like has gotten way more consistent outside of the program but they haven't competed and mm. do, do you make way to send them to Worlds? You know, this is one year where I think, man, if they need more time, maybe you make an allotment and you say you have to do a monitoring session and get it together, right? Yes. Yeah. What are you looking at? No, I just got a message coming in. Oh, I uh, was <laughs> thinking about... Uh, trying to Oksana Bayul was texting and I was trying to translate in my head what she was uh oh, amazing <laughs> <laughs> um yeah I mean actually I think one of the more interesting disciplines at nationals uh will be ice dance of course and I'm just I mean I don't know where the browns fall into place again I was disappointed by the the four continents choices um I know they keep pushing Carrera and Ponomarenko, but I sure do wish Zingas and Kolesnik could get in there or the Browns could get in there. I mean, are Chalk and Bates really going to want to go to four continents? I, do they want to go or do they feel like they have to go because you don't want to lose ground to Piper and Paul? I guess. I, to me, like, it would serve them better to not have the matchup. Go rest. I think... <sighs> you almost have to go to defend your turf, right? You I mean, look at the momentum that Piper and Paul lost last season. When right, she by not doing it, yeah. So I feel like you think that you have to go, but it doesn't necessarily determine worlds, but I can understand the fear, right? Uh, but maybe... Will the ISU look more favorably on you that you actually went to the event? You hope, right? Because as a skater, they could do art on ice if they wanted to, right? If they're invited, right? Well, that, I, would they be? I don't know. Yeah. 
unless you know Papa Dawkins and Cicerone take that slot and no one is a big enough star to you know right so then you want to I mean, for them, it's money, it's exposure, it's why you're doing this, right? You're competing be essentially because you want to compete against the top teams, but that's a miserable turnaround, right? And I mean, luckily for them, Nationals is not, they don't have the pressure of like losing Nationals against another top team. But, so that's why Four Continents is good because then they get to go against a top team and get mentally prepared, right? It's almost like for them, Nationals is a warm up, right? If they go into it thinking that way, yeah. But knowing you're going to be on the real cameras on the real TV and you got to look like a million bucks, but it's your warm up for the next competitions. And I mean, the Hawaii and Baker video that Anais Perspectives did were in Central Park. That free dance was stunning. Oh, me, no, always, Renee was the one that taught me to always look at their one um, yeah. one foot step sequence. And for them to have posted it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is tough to watch because it's so beautiful. And to know they're not. It it's wasn't a retirement officially, but do are we assuming it is? He's coaching and choreographing in California right now. So, Jonathan, if you, they are not on the schedule for training at Montreal. Yeah. Papa and Ciceron are on the schedule. And based on that extended, elongated uh, thing between the two of them, were you like, were you not thinking like, hmm, what's happening here? I mean, the way that they embraced afterward, it said it said it all to me. Yeah, it was very, it seemed like a, a video of finality for them. I didn't know if if she was sort of behind why it can't continue at the moment, if he would then pursue something else or if he was just ready to call it. I think it's both, right? I mean, they've had so many injuries. How does the other partner keep going while one is in? Or, but who knows? Like, they've both had different concerns. I would assume if anyone was going to try to still make the next Olympics, it would be Jean-Luc. But again, as, as why? We, why? a really hard partner to find for him. What are you gonna get an Olivia Smart situation where you come back and everyone's like, why'd you come back with that part? Yeah. And be honest, we thought when Olivia teamed up with Tim Deke, like, why would you leave being the star on Dancing on Ice? Like, not go to Europeans? Still they not initially be named to the world team. Yeah. But was that the right decision? Right. Right. I would really question Marie France and that life coach. And I'd be like, did you take me to dinner because you really thought that this was the right judge for my career? Or did you take me to dinner to tell me to skate with Tim Deke because you wanted a German judge? Mm. Or you wanted you wanted a Spanish judge in your pocket? That's what I would really want. Like, were is this in my best interest or is this in your best interest? Yeah. Yeah. Needs to be in both of our best interest. Yeah. And uh, like, I'm sorry, but I don't think that that was a proper matchup. I actually don't think that Olivia and Adria were ever really a great matchup. He was well matched with Sada in terms of skating. Right. Right. Good ball, right. But that was a good match. Olivia and Adria wound up working, but it took them so long to get together. Right. Um, I don't know if that's the real, I mean, they had a chemistry though. Like Olivia and Adria had this chemistry between the two of them, their personalities meshed. It does not seem like Olivia and Tim's mesh. No, I mean, I, I you know, I, I wanted to like them, but I, I just never responded to them. He doesn't seem like a Montreal skater to me. He seems I like- I agree he... with you, yeah. Like even if he were with Caroline or with someone else, like it just seems like it would like, mesh better for everyone it's just like i don't see him in that montreal aesthetic yeah yeah it's awkward you know i mean who would i want to go to montreal avon lee newen get her out of school get her there they could turn her into a star yeah that's who i'd want at montreal right if if you anyone u.s figure skating you 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 pay this girl's bills you're like we will support you go to montreal we will get you the best partner right yeah. that that kind of thing is what the sport needs. Because listen, Hawaii and Baker, based on that video, there is an opening at Montreal. 
listen, Carrera and Panamarenko are not going there. Okay, they are not it. They are not the stars to fill that, right? If if Carrera and Panamarenko go to Montreal, it's basically like watching Canadian nationals. Okay, mm. like just watching something that's a dead end, right? You need a game changer. Avonlea is a game changer. Zingas and Kolesnik, if they went to Montreal, that's a game changer. The Browns with no money, not a game changer because it, you need the whole team. You need the hours of lessons. You need like, unless they're going to coach them for free, that's not going to work, right? Um, I think Green and Parsons had their moment to go to Montreal. They got advice from other people in U.S. figure skating because Charlie White was like the golden boy. It hasn't worked out yet. I think that he needs to engage Tanith more to get those teams up. But I think for Nationals, it's going to take care of itself, right? Like I, I, But I think whoever gets that open spot in Montreal will be very interesting because they need another American team after Chalk and Bates. Like if Chalk and Bates broke a leg tomorrow, who's going to be their top American team? You mean Hawaii and Baker are out? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have all of Montreal's hopes on Carrera and Panamarenko? I don't think so. Right. Hmm. They need, they need a star. Yeah. <clears throat> Not someone average. You know, they need to really, they, they need to call it. And again, I think they need to gear younger for who they're looking at. It just seems like they go to the next on the list, and I was like, but in order to cultivate that depth, you've got to skip down. You've, you've got to go to like top juniors. And, I would, and oh, please. There are people, right? I, I would, but I would look at like Ian Somerville could be the most talented male ice dancer. He has a partner that is nowhere near his ability. So I wouldn't take him. Yeah. That's a waste of time. Unless you're going to get a partner for him that's as good as he is. Because then you run into Olivia and Tim and you're like, oh, well, that was a waste of our effort. Right. And and why have that mental anguish, right? So I would, our dance teams are not necessarily well matched below, right, to be able to be successful. And I think they need to look at that and look at what is going right on. Right out the gate. Yes. All your time and energy, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it just, craziness you know when, when you hear i mean the politics of even how certain teams got partnered together right so to lock things down it's just in, insane in the u.s but for dance do you expect the four continents results to match the nationals results to make i was just gonna bring up the same thing because i'm looking at the the entries right now and i was like you just told zingas and kolesnik and the browns like they've already been shut out Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and parsons and green weren't doing so hot on that grand prix mm -hmm. the judges are not interested yeah um so it'll be tricky again sorry to see that marjorie and zach won't be at um in the ice dance event at four continents because of concussion marjorie yeah. So. yeah do they think she'll make it for work was it her or him her i'm assuming so I don't know. I mean, okay. to see how bad that concussion is. Right? Yeah. So, hmm. I don't know. That's messy. It seems, uh, listen, do you think Ilya will skate well this year? Because last year, I, it was not great for Ilya that Jason had the moment of nationals. And he may again. I mean, Ilya needs to deliver this week. He well, needs. But Ilya also leading up to this nationals is also stronger than he was, I think. Like, and I think, especially like you're saying, the short program is, is a good step forward for him choreographically and all that stuff. It could be a big moment. But so, so Ava and Lindsay are on the Today Show. Why isn't Ilya on? Right. Was He's it still quad Axel? Have, have Hoda wear a quad god hat. For him, okay, and be like, Ilya, we love you. Quad axle. At least you know he banned her. Yes. Yeah. And then you put him on again. They're probably so afraid of. Oh my God, what if he goes off script? Pray that he goes off script. Okay. Yeah, how does Hoda? Do you, I mean like what are we talking about here? Yeah. Like Nathan never went off script. Did he 
make figure skating more popular in the U.S.? No. He could have. His skating was good enough. But he was so... Just like Carly Patterson, she had the same problem after she won the Olympics and just looked exhausted and was like, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah. Grow gymnastics. No, ma'am. Maybe Nathan's interest isn't in that sort of like perpetual celebrity. It might not be. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm just going to go to school, do something else now. Yeah. Where some people you can see never can leave that sort of celebrity idea. It has um, to be exciting enough for them. It has to be exciting enough for them to want to stay and to want to be a part of it. Yeah. So. To me, yeah. at this point, it would feel like Nathan Chen was slumming it to go visit nationals. I mean, if I were NBC, I would make sure that Adam and Ashley were like sideline reporters at U.S. Nationals. I mean, if Andrew... Let, make, let him do some sort of like continual fluff piece or something like I'm that. I'm sorry. I want to see Johnny, Tara, Adam, and Ashley and Paulina together on the broadcast. And they need good producers to... That's the key. I think a lot of this is the fault of the producers. What's yeah. being said, what's being encouraged, what's what they find interesting, I find it very off. I think that you also need like, I would be highlighting uh, all of, you know, previous winners of nationals, history. I mean, there are things that you can do to really drum it up, right? Yeah. Talk about the quad axle. You have Brian Boitano there. Get him on NBC talking about how hard it is, right? Get that fluff piece. Build it up. You have Brian. You have Evan. You have Nathan. They can talk about how hard this quad axle is. Those are three Olympic, you know, champions. And then you have him go out and win. And yeah. then you just elevated in terms of prestige. Yeah. There are things that they can do to make it more marketable. We'll see if they do it. it hopefully it'll be better than Canadian right. Nationals. Last year, Nationals was in San Jose, no crowd. Where was security? A homeless man was walking across the ice during the competition. And I posted the video to be like, hello, this could be a dangerous person there for... This isn't something that should be happening at this event right now, yeah. And people took it like more about a thing about homelessness than a thing about, at the end of the day, there should not Someone be- Someone should be able to have access to that ice just casually walking. Correct. Yeah. Hello, what if that man wanted to do Monica Seles or Nancy Kerrigan? Hello, you know, like this should not be happening, right? Yeah. That was a disaster, okay? Yeah. The it's whole yeah. So, I don't know. Do you think Danny O'Shea is going to pull it off with the side by side doubles? Like, I don't, I don't see up. any other other person making it a problem. Emily and Spencer are they going to compete? I mean, just so it, it's that that discipline in particular. That would be the one I just skip. Now, yeah. how about Kevin? Ava? How do you feel? Okay, we've had a week to digest Europeans, Jonathan. We did an entire show, basically. Being like, don't go to Europeans. You have an out for mental health. Take your time. Yeah. And and I liked when you were also talking about like, if this was like a fracture, there would be no question. Why is this not viewed just the same way as an injury? Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes as much time to recover. Yeah. When you do that bad, we're not just talking a bad performance. Okay. What happened to him at French nationals with the way he was missing the spin? And again, now we're three in a row because now we're Grand Prix final, French nationals and Europeans. This is like, you've got to just, I think, walk away for a second. I actually, he made that statement this week, right? About how he doesn't want to disappoint himself anymore. And I know everyone was behind it. I thought that statement, I thought that statement was worrying actually. Because instead of saying, I need to take time to work on myself and come back stronger, it was like, I don't want to disappoint my own talent anymore. Which again, makes it his result is his worth as a person, which is not, right? If he feels good about himself as a person first, then the results can come. Right. And that right. made me worried about that statement. And I just thought, oh my God. 
I wish. But then the decision to say, all right, no more Kevin for this season. Mm. I, did the Federation announce it? Who knows? I mean, who knows? But I mean, I think it was, I think everyone knew what you're after his short at your pants. Like this can't go on. Yeah, there's no way. But he should have never been at Europeans. Agreed. Right? And I think that that's people not understanding how to support athletes and what's happening and so on and so forth. But he should never have been there. So, but then that's also on him too, to know when you can perform and can't perform. Although as a young sheltered person, it would be easy to think you could will it so. Of course. You know, and then again, that was that comparison to Gracie, always thinking like, yeah, yeah, I'm over it now. And it's like, no, 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 really these things take time. But also the coaching staff, the Federation, someone someone almost should have been like, I know you want to go, but you're not going to go. Mm -hmm. But again, maybe it was in a way, maybe if he hadn't gone, he was going to be OK to go to Worlds and maybe it would have happened at Worlds instead. Or you have to wonder as an athlete, if I don't go to your parents, are they going to cut my funding? Because right. athletes have those kinds of worries. Yeah. It's, it's almost set up in a system where if there's not a, not a lot of money to go around, you can you get boxed into these corners, right? And then you're like, how did this happen again? Well, I mean, you know. Grace's book is coming out, right? I mean, oh. I want to read it. Audible, TSL Visionaries Dash 20, all lowercase. Uh, listen, we saw her recording her audiobook. We're going to be reading that. So, yeah, I was impressed she was going to read it herself. Well, she has to. Okay. Uh, I listened to Barbara's book, 48 Hours. Do you want to know? I, I once got hard choices, Hillary Clinton, okay? She only she only read the prologue and then it was like some random narrator. I turned that off. If Hillary oh, can't read her, if Hillary can't read her own book and she wants to be president. Well, I feel like in some cases the narrator just might do a better job. No. If it's their job, you know what I mean? No way. You get the person's personality when they are reading. I have to say, one of the best audiobook experiences I ever had was Tina Fey reading Bossy Pants. Yes. I, I remember I was like at an airport. I had to like sit down on some stairs. I was like. <laughs> you don't want to hear some random narrator reading Bossy Pants. So thank goodness Gracie is going to read her book. Yeah. I mean, for something so personal, you're right. Yeah. And when Nathan read his book, maybe he should have learned how to say Tim Gable. He kept saying Tim Gable and it was just. It was a cringe. I couldn't, I had to put it down. I had to put it down. I was like, if Nathan didn't care enough to learn how to pronounce the last name of the person who was called the quad God before he was, and now Ilya is, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't. After like, that podcast, he's afraid to say gay. <laughs> <laughs> correct. Right. And, and, uh, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't listen to it. Like yeah. I just thought, it gave a subconscious. We didn't take this seriously. The whole no. thing. Yeah. And his book is depressing. I didn't read it. I can't say. And again, as people, like people are target audience for that. I was barely aware that it happened. It makes, it makes <laughs> you, you feel the loneliness and the isolation and, uh, and the pressure of going for the Olympics when you think about his book and what's going on. Mm -hmm. they, it's almost like they couldn't massage it well. They massaged it better on TV, right? Without some of those. It, it just, it comes across more in the book. Okay. And I, I just think, oh, right? Like you you can't. Yeah, it's no wonder he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've moved on. I've moved yeah, on. I gave everything. And now I, I have to be done. I mean, look at how many skaters like have that response, <laughs> right? So, yeah, it, it just, it just, it was not a great, but, but I think the Gracie book will be good. I mean, it's going to yeah, be. I think so too. I think so too. When I mean, is it supposed to come out? First week of February. Say it again. I think it's like February sixth. It's the first okay. week of. Or, oh, so pretty soon. Yeah. Oh no, We're, we'll listen to it on. Uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll do. Maybe we'll do Nureyev and Gracie on uh, the book club together because people will want to talk about both. So buckle John up. Murray, Nureyev, well, Gracie Gold. <laughs> Sharp left turn. I actually don't think 
um, that different, right? Like all brilliant. Gracie, one of the best jumpers of all time. The, not since Tanya. Have you seen a girl just spring in the air like that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Nerea of quintessential talent. So you can, it's just, uh, No, I, yeah, I got you. Listen, she's going for it. With the title of that book, she's a winner. Okay? She's going for the gold, baby. So yeah. and, and it would appear with that title, also reaching, a, reaching an audience outside of skating. Yes. And I think that's what we're talking about with like these managers and stuff. My hope for her is she sells a ton of books, gets a ton of speaking gigs for teenage girls, high school, whatnot, that she has a whole cottage career that could be designed based on her book, but she has to nail the book interview tour. Mm. She has to be engaged and she has to seem positive and optimistic at the end you can't yeah. you can't be like oh skating is awful hard to still be yeah in that place instead of seeming like you've come out the other side but you have to be like i love to skate every day you know they, they have to show her like the clip of her now jumping like it's my sanctuary right that's yeah yeah we'll see you know that's so like crazy <laughs> Big Sarah smile. Right? Uh, <laughs> like, That's fine. Where's Alyssa Lou? Is she coming to nationals? I mean, that... I mean, again, she just like she didn't even check out at the hotel. She's like, I'm out. Goodbye. I'm done. I am done. Okay. Here, can I be done now? I got you your damn medal. Get me out of here. And then you said that Isbo has the same agent that Alyssa Lou did, uh, and that same as Gracie did. Oh, yeah. Just keep perpetuating the cycle. It's great. Yeah. Why change anything? It's going really well. It's going so well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to answer the sexy episode.